couple of months back, somebody achieved something crazy. They ported Elden Ring into VR, and by all accounts, it looked incredible. I mean, sure, maybe you need a PC that could challenge Crisis and you know, modern video games, but this was still really cool to see. And this had a lot of people clamoring for a FromSoft VR game. But there was one thing missing from the Elden Ring mod the gameplay. Sure, you could play the game, but I never seen anyone play it for more than 10 minutes. Rolling in VR, just a no-go. The camera shake, the weird way you actually got to achieve it, maybe it was also just crashing your PC, a lot of problems. Yeah, the wonderful world of modding. Anyways, the more I thought about it, the more I realized just how hard it would be to pull off a VR from soft game, or Souls-like. Fast forward a little over a year ago, and I heard rumblings of a VR game that was going to take a crack at it. But how are they going to solve the problem of difficulty and giving the player that satisfied feeling of pushing past your adversity, as well as getting better? The magic secret sauce of FromSoft games. Well... As many Souls-like games start off, you're in an abandoned dungeon crawling with undead, as stand-in meat puppets for you to beat the living hell out of, and show you the ropes. Needless to say, the combat's pretty good. The swordplay feels fast and snappy, pretty satisfying, all things considered. So then you leave your concrete tomb and taste fresh air for the first time, only to be greeted by your very first boss, slowly approaching you menacingly. And as you start duking it out with them, you realize very quickly that if you just guard your left side, you're pretty damn good. Every time you parry or connect with one of his incoming attacks, resets his attack position. So, as long as you keep that shield to the left-hand side, you're right as rain. But even though you're perfectly stunning his attacks, you very quickly find out that he has an absolute abundance of health. Yay. But hey, you knock him dead and make your way to the abandoned chapel. And in that chapel, you find the most souls-like of souls-like NPCs. Stop right there if you know any better. They are dark and mysterious, talking often in riddles and strange murmurs and being needlessly mean to you. Why is there nobody like you here? One thing is certain. There is zero chance Vita is going to make a lore video on this. So yay for confusing stories. But seriously, all in all, this whole place is 9 out of 10 amazing job. The hub area looks so from soft, dark, gritty. Overall, you don't want to be there, but say la vie. And the NPCs are pretty endearing. Of course, we have our resident maiden and our resident blacksmith. The blacksmith needlessly throwing insults at you all the time, and the maiden being kind of nice, kind of like a, indifferent also to you, It's uh, but also doing a lot for you, so it just feels weird. Anyway, this is going to lead somewhere, I promise. After settling in and being sold more about this interesting world, you then set off to make your way to a fallen city of rubble and despair, slaying fallen zombies that try to rush you, only to have a ranged skeleton pelting you from afar, punishing you for not killing him before you went down. Good old souls. Mwah. You poke and stab each zombie, making sure to take them on one at a time. You begin to make your way deeper into the city, having fun carefully checking around every corner because you already experience what it's like to have enemies stack up on you. You start to fall in love with the layout of this ruined city, slowly chipping away what enemies still wander in it. Zombie after zombie, skeleton after skeleton, only to then see it. The taker of effort, the guzzler of despair, and the laziest of design choices. An enemy in armor. Why? It was so good. It was it was so good. <sighs> we were there. We we arrived. It was it was great. We were fucking gaming. It was good. We were knocking heads, slicing off arms, knocking a blade in the skull and butt, just dropping them. It was good. We hit we were good. We were good, man. Fuck. <clears throat> Let me explain. But in order to do so, let's jump to the past. A new VR game taking the community by storm, impeccable graphics, and an amazing world to play in. You can easily lop off enemies' heads and arms, I'm not fucked up, you're fucked up, and even rip out an enemy's heart and eat it. Metal. It was called Hellsplit Arena, and it was so good. And as a person who enjoyed all of these videos that the VR community uploaded about this game, needless to say, I was really excited. And the minute I got my VR headset, I jumped on and started playing. And I'm happy to report, people were right. What an amazing game with so many weapons, perfect combat. But when you got two hours in and fought your first boss, they decided to cover him in armor. And it turned out a little like this. And a new term in the VR community was born, the ever-present ground pound. Beating the shit out of an enemy as they th lay on the ground limp. And you don't, as far as, yeah, okay. But let's just make this really easy to understand. Uh, Grimlord. 
back to Hellsplit. And back to Grimlord. And uh, you get it. Okay, yeah. Okay. Y yes, it is satisfying the first couple times you do it. And it might have even stayed satisfying and endearing if there was another better way. Oh, I don't know. Maybe a weapon that could puncture through armor. But if you couldn't have guessed, no. I tried using a hammer. Nope. I tried using a dagger with very, very high pierce stat. Also, no. How about a spear, which is literally one of history's greatest force multiplier weapons? No, it's no. Also, Tiny Rat, the spear is only advantages range. Dude, spear way more advantage than just range. God damn you. Don't come at me with the balance argument. I said I used a dagger. It was garbage. It was so gar- was not rewarded for having to be literally touching the enemies by chat. Stop. Stop it. Stop. Axes, bows, nata, nata. I wonder, can you guess what is one of the best counters to armor? If you guessed more armor, I'm losing my my fucking my. It's, it's a shield. A shield is is what actually is the best counter. Another f uh, armor. It's Jesus. Little poke with a sword. Shield bash. Pop. Poke with a sword. Shield bash. Pop. Boop. Pop. Boop. Pop. And they're on their ass and smacking the back of the head with the with a weapon. And you rinse. Repeat. This is the loop. Kill me. Fucking stab me in the chest. I want to die. Fuck this life. Let me switch spots with you, King. <laughs> oh, and one person did pop into my stream and tell me that the classic uh, dual-wielding disco rave joystick jerk-off motion still works fantastically. You can dual-wield and just kind of go up there and shake them wrists and uh, nuke some people. So that still works. Another favorite amongst the VR community in terms of their answer to... Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Is... Okay. <laughs> Look, uh, this game by no means is bad. I mean, one thing that you'll hear nobody say is that this game looks bad. Seriously, this world is beautiful in kind of an Orwellian kind of way. Like childbirth or liking Japanese culture. Good, but a little off. The point is, the world of a FromSoft game is a crucial part of what makes a FromSoft game a FromSoft game, or a Souls-like Souls-like. But the combat is just... And I know what you're thinking. Maybe you just need to get good, Grin. And to that, I would like to say, hold up, my friend. Did I ever say this game was hard? And no hobby, I'm not saying this game is, is easy. But if you play the game enough and you play a little more aggressive, you will start to see the openings, or I should say cracks, in it. Just to prove that the combat is manageable, or at least the amount that I played inadvertently. I just wanted to have a fun time for a stream challenge. So I challenge us to play this game, adding wrist weights into the mix and adding weight over the course of the stream. We max out our weight and it was actually a really good time, but it we never got to a point where we ever lo lost momentum, I guess. And I'm not like great at games, to be clear. But if you do want to go check out that video, it'll be linked in the description. I did get a little frustrated, just a heads up, by the fact that I, I, I guess I just kept getting the opposite feeling of what I get when I play a Souls game. Simply put, in moments like this, and this, or even like this. I think I'm torturing people. Hey, hey, stop. Stop it. Nice. Okay, got up. All right. Ooh, look at that knee. Mm. If only that could, like, slow you down or something. And there was, a, like, a symbol above your head that said, hey, you're now, uh, you know, staggered or something. I don't know. It doesn't make me feel like I'm growing or learning anything. And some of you might be saying, well, Grin, that's because you're playing it that way. Nope. I tried playing it the way I wanted. I put all of my points into strength. And still, it took eight shots just to kill one guy and felt kind of terrible because I didn't know how much damage I was even dealing. Ever wonder why FromSoft has health bars to show and give information to the player that is valuable on whether they should push in or back up? And the bosses. Listen, we're already soaking up too much time. We're all gonna die one day. Let's just move this along by showing you a sequence of, of boss battles. It does look like the game has a passive buff that you get when it comes to giving him a minute so you're not just dive bombing him. Oh god. Alright. Oh, we only had one hit on him. Damn it. Trying to build up that orange, which I think is a break metric. Smashing that ass. <laughs> left leg. Oh, it's left leg. Come on. Ah. That was me going full send, and the health bar was still just... Imagine if you didn't full send, and instead you were like trying to RP it and go like, Boom! Now eat my shield! Boom! Uh, 
kill me. <laughs> Anyways, we, okay, we've been pretty doom and gloom. Um, let me be clear. There are moments where this game absolutely shines. It gives you that feeling that Souls-like games gives you. Moments when you slice off a zombie's arm and even parrying a boss's attack, making you feel like you're sparring with a god. And a lot of the boss's attacks are actually wildly creative, seemingly really fair too. Placing down a fire pool and then moments later, then detonating a wave, signaling to the player, move. Giving just enough time to, for you to sequence and then adjust. Brilliant. But the problem is, is just how much of a wet noodle you are, even if you full send strength or something. Not being able to do damage, even if you're willing to take a loss in another area, sucks. Especially in VR, where your effort is 10 x meaning if you do not reward the effort, then it's just wasted effort. So, how do you solve these, maybe just me, or maybe the community's problems? Quote unquote, the soul's difficulty problem. First things first, I think you need to give players a way to punch through all armor, and ideally accompany that with a audible sound that rewards the player for like, you set up it correctly, you were able to determine that's armor, here's a specific weapon that you're gonna have to carry around for armor. So when you hit an enemy, it doesn't sound like a garbage can getting deflected, but instead a puncture hit, a stab, uh, and that stab needs to reward sufficient damage or else it's pointless. And it would be awesome if you made one of the coolest ice pick like armor breaker weapons, which is basically a, a pyramid a dagger is what I always call it. Now, definitely not the right name, <laughs> but yeah. If you accompany that with some sizable damage, if you're able to punch through an enemy's uh, front line after opening them up and then lunging forward and stabbing this into their uh, mask and helmet, cracking their armor and embedding it in their head, that feels so satisfying and amazing. But instead, we just get this thing where you're hitting a sword and it tings off of them with some sparks and it just feels super unrewarding and unsatisfying. It's not like we can't kill him because then you just hit him with your shield a couple times, he'll fall on the ground like an asshole and then you just bash him in the back of the head six times. It's not like it's a better equivalent <laughs> you know? Also, you'd be rewarding a player for being able to visually determine what he needs to do for the given enemy, and also reward him for taking a sacrifice at, at storing a specific weapon specifically good at dealing with this specific problem. Sorry for all the specifics. And again, please, for the love of God, give the weapon enough damage. I'm not saying you need to one-tap everything, but if you're able to secure a, a precision hit, please reward the player for that. And also, make weapons that have really, really close as hell range. Give them a boost in damage because you have there's a cost to being so point blank because ultimately if a ranged weapon gets this job done in the same two hits and you can easily just pump your wrist two more times then what's the fucking point oh and this would be the cherry on top to this rewarding your effort mechanism that i'm trying to preach a little bit or hope if they could somehow put into the game for rogues and warriors a precision shot a precision glint that basically arrives somewhere on your enemy's body, i.e. on the head, on the shoulder, on the lower hip, on the knee, on the leg, randomly, wherever it is, their Achilles heel spot, to where if you contact or pierce or even hit, that rewards with massive, massive damage. And if this could arrive on all the enemies that you're focusing on, that would be so, so rewarding and fantastic. Right now, there's nothing that would that stops a player from just shaking the wrist six times and stabbing them five times in a second. This would reward that mechanism, and you could even keep some of the tankiness. It would reward your precision stabs, your precision hits. And maybe you could even invest in a skill even more, and that would make the glint even smaller, but also reward you with even more damage. That would be so much better, and would actually give you an incentive to be precise and not just devolve into this berserker rave nightmare hell. <laughs> okay? But please make the damage enough to where you would be incentivized to use it, because otherwise people would just follow the path of least resistance and ground pound like no tomorrow. But if you could drop a person within two stabs of the precision shot, then people would just look for the precision shot. Or at least people who want to be effective would. Secondly, find tiny ways to reward the player, especially for cleverness. For example, the fact that enemies can't do damage to other enemies robs you of clever thinking. Being able to explode a oil barrel by hucking your blade and setting off a, a little spark. Being able to pick up a brick and huck it at an enemy's face, slightly stunning them for a split second. Only very good if you're able to charge your enemy, which would increase player aggression have them push at the enemy only for there to be enemies hiding around the corners that are gonna come stomp on him for being overly aggressive. It could be a give and take. And this is just a side thing. Where the hell is the shopkeeper slash fender? When do we get the ability to buy items with souls, like medals and shit? Like, I get this is a part of the whole souls experience, is you just being lost and like having to go online and look up a YouTube video on where to get something. Kind of fostering a community by forcing people to go to these kind of 
hive mind locations, channels, reddits, discords, things like that. And that community helps push the game, but, but, but that doesn't exist for this game, or at least I haven't been able to find it yet. So it'd be great if you could hire someone on your team, your PR person, your community manager of some kind, to make even just quick clips to not only help the community, but you could also use those clips to share on social media, and in doing so, create a community. That would also share those clips around, and those clips, if filmed properly, could be really enticing to people who don't even know what this is. And you could also showcase people how they best should play the game to get the result that they want. And then those shared clips by your community could get more people seeing the game and therefore more money, more community, more people interested in talking about your game. It's not that easy, I'm aware, but yeah, something. And honestly, that's it. Honestly, when talking about game development, you should never use the words Honestly, that's it, because you have no idea how hard that is, but still. <laughs> Only have the criticism I do is because I know how much of a gigantic problem this is to solve, and how much of an undertaking it is to do so. Shout out to the devs for even having enough heart to do so. But yeah, sorry I had so much to say. And ultimately, the reason why I said so much is because I do believe this game can be absolutely great. And with this being an early access game, I hope this game becomes what we all hope it to be. Or maybe just me what I hope it to be, <laughs> which is an amazing game in an amazing world with plenty of adversity to push beyond. Sincerely, Grin. Look, an archer! Go ahead, end me! I can't not deflect it! Come on! Right here! It's on the ground, my shield! Look! Do it! You can't even hit me when I fucking goddamn all of you! We hit them a couple of times and they fall over unless we get them in the back of the neck, which is kind of neat, but also kind of like, what the heck is wrong with humanity? <sighs> nice. <sighs> did you get that breastplate? There it is. I think they did add that. I think they did make it so that if you get them in the neck plate, you kill them. So I guess there's this Dark Souls like, if you know their weak spot is the neck, <laughs> it's the only place that's pseudo not armored, then yeah, but... I'm just using a long sword to go poke. Why would I use why would I use a dagger? Why would I use a, a short axe that has one point when I have like infinite points and that thing? You know what I mean? This game's great. <laughs> this game's great. Really quick, before you go, <laughs> I, there, I didn't mention a lot of the cool things that this game does, because there's a lot of cool things. Look at all these things I can eventually create. Look how crazy some of these things look. Ah, the one that I'm hunting for, and they do got me by the balls on this one, I'll, I'll admit. They're, they put too much cool stuff, although I have real no hope that it's going to be better than pointy sword. But anyways, we have this thing. Look at that freaking weird thing, and that might be cool, but check this out. Where is it? Come on, you. Ah. What a fucking obnoxious way <laughs> to sort through something. All right, here we go. Swords. Eh. Swords. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Look at this damn thing. That one. <laughs> that one. And this one. Look at this. This is what we can wield. Will it be better than literally anything that we've, we're already using? I don't know. I maybe, hopefully, I, I can't, hopefully, there's still, there's still time for this thing to grow, you know what I mean? So, we'll, uh, we'll see. But, uh, you know, maybe. <sighs>